I know a lot about my Oliver. There's there's a lot there's other guys that eat, sleep, and drink it, and they've forgot more than I'll ever know. Take pride in your stack and wear it. Johnson Toe is an American craftsman who could take your favorite coin design and create art that you'd be very proud to wear and something very special to share. JT Coin Rings, handcrafts, handmade jewelry, especially for you. I have a piece of Johnson Toe Gallery art that I carry with me and has been with me every day for the last four years. It's a good idea to get your orders in for loved ones now because when it gets close to Christmas, JT will be booked. All you need is to know your loved one's year of birth and ring size. Hello, America. Welcome to Hello, America. Hello, America. Thank you for joining me on this bright, sunny morning as we head to central Illinois to meet with Chet Walters, who will teach us the wonderful, mysterious history of the Oliver Tractor. Ooh. That not the most voluptuous looking piece of machinery ever made? Possibly. Join me, won't you? We pick up our story with Chet Walters in 1966. And make sure you catch this whole episode because there will be a part three and we are going to discover that Oliver Tractors is manufacturally DNA stepbrothers with the Ford Mustang. Fasten your seatbelts because this episode is going to rock. So you have the 880 in that till about 61, two, somewhere in there. And then the race is on to get more horsepower and stuff when we go into the 1800 tractor. And that's when the white company came in? Not quite yet. Okay. Not quite yet. Uh. Um, so you get in there and you get the 1800s in there. Uh-huh. And so um, you had the 1600, the 1800, the 1900 series tractors. They were still making the 880s and the 770s for the small tractors. The 880 got let go there for the 1600 series tractor because it basically about kind of sort of the same horsepower. And then you got more hydraulics, a little more refinement. Um, then you have what you call the 1800As and 1800Bs. Well, the early 1800s had a stripe down the side of them that went from the grill clear back to the dash and it's got little bitty checkers and it looks like a checkerboard and then the Oliver emblems back by the dash and it says Oliver along it that's what a true checkerboard is a lot of people get mixed up and think because the grill has the square holes in it that's what makes it a checkerboard that's not what makes it a checkerboard so those would be the 18 1900 a series tractors then you go, you still have the 100 series, but they changed to what we are, refer to the spear decal down the side of the hood uh -huh. that said Oliver 1800, Oliver 1900. Those are called the B series. I think some people call, when they go to the 50 series, they call it the, the C series, or, or there's some late 1800s, 1900s in there right before you go to the 50 series. Look, muddy water there for uh -huh. me, okay, so to speak. <laughs> Manufacturing. No, manufacturing. <laughs> so, but, uh, so then we go on to the 50 series. So we have the uh, 1650 tractor. Yep. We have 1550 gets introduced in there, which is basically the same as a 1650 tractor with a little less refinements, a little less engine power. Um, then we you still got the 770 tractor in there, and they changed the grill to a fiberglass grill to look like the checkerboard grill. That's why they made it out of fiberglass. It used to, the, I never the, touched one, I didn't yeah, know that. I've got one here in the shed that oh. I could show you real quick. Cool. But the 880s and 770s, when they first come out, they had what we call the horizontal bar grill in it. And they, it didn't have no checker to it, it's just how they designed them. 
you go to the 1750 was introduced in there. The 1850s, the 1850s, the gas, a lot of those were popular. The diesels. Today they're still popular, right? They're still popular. The diesels had Perkins engines in them. So all these 100 series tractors, a lot of them had Waukeshaws, either gas or diesel engines in them. Then, but the 1900s, starting back there, they had a four-cylinder Jimmy diesel in them. And they called them Screaming Jimmies. So that evolved into 1950, different stuff same engine but then you get in there about 66 or so we're still in the 50 series of the Olivers but the horsepower race is really on and uh, Alice Chalmers comes out with the D21 with a turbocharger on it 1206 International comes out with a turbocharger on it so the turbochargers is a big thing so they go from the 1950 Plain 50 with a screaming Jimmy diesel engine in it, four cylinder, to hey, let's take that Waukesha six cylinder that we got in the 1750 diesel, let's throw a turbocharger on it, and we'll put it in this 1900 or 1950 bathtub. Now we have a 1950 T for turbo. So T was supposed to stand for turbo, but as us Oliver guys know, later on, I suppose you could say it stands for trouble because you took an engine that wasn't necessarily designed for the boost of the turbocharger and everything. My dad and my uncle had two 1950Ts when they were farming back in the 60s. Um, dad said one Sunday afternoon they were plowing along and my uncle was ahead of him and he said all of a sudden there's this big cloud of smoke. And he said he went down one side of the tractor, my uncle went down the other side, and they could shake hands in the middle of the block. So, oh my God. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, so this this gets you about 1967 is when Oliver did the tees. They ran the tees till '69, and then that's about the time the '55 series starts getting induced, introduced. So we get 1655, 1755, 1555, 1855, 1955. We're still so the 1955, 1855. Had a turbocharged, they had the turbocharged engine, it's still that same 310 Waukesha. There's still some issues there, but they're trying to hone them out. That's when white starts coming on board. What uh, year is this again? Well, this is the early seven, late 60s, early 70s. Okay. They would have been, they absorbed Minneapolis Moline at the uh -huh. time. So then you start having dissension in the ranks and yeah. inner inner house fighting of Minneapolis Moline. Uh, we won't still do things our way. Oliver, we want to do things our way. And White's gone, but we want you all to do it this way. So then you start having Oliver tractors painted Minneapolis Moline gold and sent out saying Minneapolis Moline on the side of them. And you get Minneapolis Moline tractors painted Oliver metal green with spears down the side of them and say Oliver on them. And, and then we get a the G1355 comes out and you get Minneapolis Moline frame rails and engine and Oliver rear end and transmission okay. um, with outboard planetary. In part three, we're going to find out how the Oliver, now white tractor, became literal stepbrothers with the Mustang. You got to see part three.